it's all I'm getting this one in on my morning commute. So if I got background noise, I do apologize, but I gotta get this one out. So uh, last night I was on, um, I, I forget the name of the show with a uh, black fight fan and, uh, um, and, and the two ladies, Nick J and Boxiana. Um, shout out to them. But uh, the topic of discussion was about the status of boxing and you know the current current state that boxing is in. And, and why is boxing in the state it's in, and why are these gimmick fights, and I'm using the term gimmick, um, with, you know, the Jake Pauls and people like that seem to get more attention than the, the regular boxing matches. And they, they had, you know, their opinions on what they were and what the reason was and this, that, and the other. And you guys can go over there and check them out. And I'll uh, see what they had to say about it. I'm not gonna get into all that on this on this uh, video, but this, this is what my opinion is: that Floyd Mayweather and his whole, um, you know, big money fights and money over, you know, what I'm saying money being the key factor late in his career is not why boxing is the way it is. Um, Know, the, the reality is that by the time Floyd got to that mindset, Floyd had done put in all kind of work. Um, Manny Pacquiao, looking at how he moves right now, um, Manny Pacquiao had already has already put in all kind of work. If these fighters of the day were to look at the blueprint laid before them by those guys and that willingness to fight, tough competition and dare themselves and move up a division and fight the toughest guy or the tougher guys in the division and things of that nature. Those are the things that made boxing hot. The thing before that, if you go back a generation or two, when you had the four horsemen in the welterweight division, and I'm just going to keep it in the welterweight division and, and all for right now. When you, you look at the four horsemen, Hagler, Hearns, Leonard, and Durant, Hagler was the, the bigger guy, but he was the guy that was the traditional middleweight. The other guys were welterweight fighters. Duran being the guy that was that really made his name at 135, but then moved up. To Sugar Ray Leonard didn't tell Duran get a belt. Um, Sugar Ray Leonard gave Duran a fight. Duran beat Sugar Ray Leonard. You know why he beat him? Because he got an opportunity to beat him got an opportunity to fight him. Um, with Hearns and Leonard, the, the negotiations or the, the talk of the fight didn't drag out three years. Those guys got in the ring and fought each other. When 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 the guys moved, when Hagler moved up to fight, I'm mean, excuse me, when Hearns moved up to fight Hagler, the fight happened. It wasn't a whole bunch of him hauling around and things like that. And, and if you go back even further, I mean, you can look at one box rig and look at these guys' resumes, and, and you just see all these guys fighting each other two, three, four times. No, no, nobody worried about a uh, loss or worried about, oh, if I get one more loss, I'm not relevant. Those guys were fighting to stay busy. Part of what I think it was, these guys had a necessity to fight. They needed- Bluetooth disconnected. They needed to get fights in on a consistent basis to make ends meet. Bluetooth connected. But also these guys cared about legacy. These guys didn't want someone else walking around with a claim to be the best in the division or be the best in the sport. You know, and when you, you look at guys like Shane Mosley, Oscar De La Hoya, Winky Wright, Felix Trinidad, Vernon Forrest, um, M M what's his name? Uh, Mayorga. You know, these guys were mixing it up. Even you throw Fernando Vargas in there. You know, these guys all were fighting each other. And and, and they done so, some of them multiple times. So, I think that all plays a part in it. I mean, you can look at the heavyweight division and you look at the, the 80s and the 90s, early 2000s, guys were fighting each other. You look at the state of the heavyweight division today, it takes two years to make a marquee fight in the heavyweight division. 
That is part of the problem. That is what turns fans off. I'm a diehard boxing fan. This shit turns me off. But I just support the sport because I'm a diehard boxing fan. But there are a lot of things that I see take place in the sport of boxing that make me turn away from it. But I just keep on turning back. Now there's some things that go on in the sport today that I, I can wash my hands with completely. But there's also some things that go on in the sport that, that I love. So, you know, boxing as a whole just needs to do better. I mean, I'm talking about promoters and managers and things like that. Stop protecting these fighters. Stop worrying about, you know, well, if this guy's with this stable and he beats my guy, it's going to diminish his value, this, that, and the other, and well, whatever the case may be. Or, or, or stop, I'm not going to send my guy to fight on this network because we built him up over here and whatever the case may be. You got, I mean, when, when they want to get it right, they get it right. They have to want to get it right more consistently. That's what has to happen. They have to want to get it right more consistently and, and put the rubber to the road, you know what I'm saying, and, and make these things, make these fights take place because the fans aren't going to keep tuning in for fights that they already know the conclusion of, especially when you're talking about putting pay-per-view. I just stated in another video, I'm a big Errol Spence Jr. fan. Bought, bought his pay-per-views um, with Mikey Garcia, with Sean Porter, and with Danny Garcia. I'll be quite honest. All three of those fights going in, I felt like I knew the outcome before the fights happened. But I still tuned in because I knew it would be exciting to watch and I wanted to support the event. But, but to be honest, all three of those fights were, in my opinion, going in, mismatches. Now, the Porter fight ended up being a lot closer in terms of the rounds were closer, closely closer contested than I expected. But I still felt like Errol Spence won eight rounds and then had a knockdown. So on my scorecard, it was a wide fight. He won the fight wide, but it was an exciting fight. At the same time, I also felt like Sean Porter lost the fight to Ugas, but because the Spence fight was already in the works, Sean Porter got the decision. So if you ask me, am I saying that there's corruption in boxing for in place for the benefit of those putting on events? I, I absolutely think so. Because we've seen this too many times. I mean, you look at Felix Stern, in my opinion, handedly beat Oscar De La Hoya. De La Hoya had the Bernard Hopkins fight basically in his back pocket. There was no way Oscar De La Hoya was going to lose that fight to Felix Stern when that, when that Bernard Hopkins fight was there, unless he got knocked out. So, those are the things that are hurting the sport of boxing. It doesn't have anything to do with what Floyd Mayweather did when he was an active fighter. It doesn't have anything to do with Floyd taking exhibition fights. It doesn't have anything to do with Jake Paul and those guys having YouTube fights and fight basketball players and all kind of stuff. Boxing has the formula. They need to go back to it. You know, there's a reason that guys like Sugar Ray Leonard were making more money in their day that some of the top boxers today make. And here it is, 20 years, 30 years later. So, that's all I gotta say on the subject. Boxing needs to get out its own way. Follow the formula that's already been laid out before them, before, but in generations before, that has worked to a T. And start back working it and tweak it to, to today's standards. But you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater and reinvent how to put on boxing events. You don't reinvent how to promote fights. You still got to promote fights and then let the the YouTube streams and the other stuff, that, that the live streams on YouTube and the interviews and the social media and all the, the Twitter and Instagram and all that, that the fighters can do themselves. That is a bonus. That is an extra. But you, the promoters still have to have to promote these fights. We have fights coming on 
and we haven't seen a commercial for the fight and the fight's coming on the weekend and it's a big fight so you know and, and, I, and I mentioned Errol Smith Jr. let me say this same thing with Terrence Crawford I, prom- I, I went out and bought his pay-per-views knowing before the fight that it was pretty much was going to be uh, a, a victory for Terrence Crawford now in saying that with both guys Terrence and Errol that's a testament to how great they are. Um, it, it's not necessarily to say that, oh, because I knew the conclusion, I couldn't buy the fight. I mean, there's always, these, these guys are quality fighters, so there's always a chance that you can get an entertaining fight. But I, w- I would definitely say, I didn't think the Amir Khan fight should have been on pay-per-view. I don't think the Mikey, I didn't think the Mikey Garcia or Danny Garcia fight should have been on pay-per-view for Errol. And I, and I can understand how Terrence it was on pay-per-view with post all because they had to test the water. But I just feel like boxing has to do better. That's all I gotta say on the subject. D Lo 404 Boxing. You know I said a lot. Thank y'all for hanging with me. I'm out. Peace. Like, share, comment, and subscribe, please.